Here's a completely nutty idea for the game that'll be played here tonight in Minneapolis. How about if just once, just once, the physical edge would go to the Pittsburgh side? Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot. If Steelers comes your way bright and early every weekday, if you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer up daily shots of Penguins and Pirates right where you found this. But tonight, here in the Twin Cities, it'll be Steelers versus Vikings with an 8.20 Eastern Time kickoff. And, you know, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I'm expecting some spectacular football game here. It has meaning, it has significant meaning to both teams, each of whom is trying hard to hang on on the periphery of their respective conferences playoff scenes but I actually see a road map for this game to be won by the visitors through oh I can't believe I'm about to say this but through line play offensive line and defensive line and I am aware, yes, of how ridiculous that sounds in saying it out loud. However, however, consider this. From the Steelers' offensive line standpoint, they're coming off at least a good quarter against the Ravens. They simplified some things. They started going more straight ahead. There wasn't as much gimmickry involved. John Leglue came in whenever B.J. Finney got hurt at left guard. Made a difference at that position. And, and things just felt a little bit more balanced. There was rhythm. You saw it. It wasn't just Najee Harris. It was Benny Snell, too. Running right up the gut. That doesn't happen if you don't have holes. And there were holes there. But on top of that, the Vikings are missing a lot of guys on defense, and notably up front, Daniel Hunter and Everson Griffin. These are big losses. That team, that defense, isn't getting to Ben Roethlisberger without doing some significant blitzing. Doesn't mean they won't do that. They might. But they're not going to get there just on brute strength. They're not going to get there on experience or savvy. They're hurting on that line. And the best way to make them hurt even more, to soften them up even more, is to do what we saw the Steelers do to Baltimore. And that's to run the ball right at them. Wear them out. No one likes it. No one likes being pounded on like that. No matter how tough you think your defense is, you're going to start wearing down. As for the other side of the football, this, this is where things get a little bit interesting. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees. Choose when and how you'd prefer to do that studying, whether it's at Point Park's gorgeous downtown Pittsburgh campus, whether it's online, maybe a flexible hybrid format would work best for you. Find out more about all of this at pointpark.edu. I've had almost as much positive to say about the defensive line as I've had about the offensive line this season. The only difference has been that Cam Hayward is employed by one of those. It hasn't been much better at all, though, truth be told. Yep. There were some good things against Baltimore. We saw Chris Wormley come alive. I, I, whether that was because, as a lot of uh, players and, and Mike Tomlin were saying afterward, because he was facing the team that traded him or whatever. Hey, dude, I mean, you know, pretend they're all purple. Montrevious Adams shows up on Tuesday of that week, reports to the facility, plucked out of practice squad land, and Made a real impact. I was getting off the ball in a hurry. 
terrific in terms of finishing his tackles. Uh, build the gaps. You know, stuff Cam was talking about in exasperation a couple of weeks ago. Fill the damn gaps. Fill the damn gaps. Well, Adams did that. Adams did that. Gave the defensive line a different look just by being competent. And Cam himself, it should be noted, liked a lot of what he saw, and he's not exactly the type to blow smoke on this stuff. You know, I think uh, before the season, you have those moments um, that you talk to the guys. You know, guys, you're going to get an opportunity. We don't know when. We don't know how. Um, but there's going to be an opportunity. Just make sure you're ready. Uh, and, you know, you look at that game, uh, there's a, there, there are those opportunities. And we have to uh, relish those and be ready for those. Um, but, you know, we're creating depth that way. And, uh, you know, we're going to be a better team because of it. Um, these guys are young. Um, they're hungry. Um, and they're just going to continue to grow. Now, add on top of that that Minnesota's offensive line is a mess. Against the Lions, oh wait, let me rephrase that. In the loss to the Lions, as if there's some greater dignity in tying the Lions, Minnesota coaching staff was forced to move around three different players on the line. Christian Derisaw, their outstanding rookie left tackle, wasn't available, won't be available for this one either. The starting line from left to right, is Ole Udo, Ezra Cleveland, Garrett Bradbury, Mason Cole, and Brian O'Neill. And I'm here to tell you that the only one of those five who will be an even remote concern to the Steelers is the last one, is O'Neill. Really, really good football player. He would theoretically be lined up against T.J. Watt. If Keith Butler and Tomlin are smart, they'll move TJ around. Not that TJ has to be worried about how to beat O'Neill. It's just, you know, path of least resistance and everything. But the rest of these guys? Against Cam? Against whatever happened to Adams this past Sunday? Against whatever happened to Wormley this past Sunday? Against a fired up? Alex Highsmith, as if he's ever anything but. It's not inconceivable that you could see the defensive front do something good. And that's to say nothing of Dalvin Cook not being available. Minnesota's not got their running game. Uh, Kirk Cousins is going to be a uh, an inviting statue back there. You know, someone you go after. This isn't like Lamar Jackson where you've got to worry about him peeling around the edges and sealing him off or forming a ring around him the way you saw the Steelers do so many times in the game against Baltimore. That's not this. This is pin the ears back and go get him. And that's, you know, it's an important game under any circumstance. It's an important game regardless of how the Steelers were to win it, up to and including in hideous fashion. But... There's something extra enticing about the possibility that they might well out physical a team on the lines, either line. Watch for it. Watch for it. I know I'll be doing that here tonight at U.S. Bank Stadium. When we come back, just one question. Question in today's comes from overseas. Constantine asks, Hey Dan, greetings from Germany. Since Mike Tomlin said he's open for some positional changes and we had a couple new guys stepping up this past Sunday, who do you think has the most staying power on the roster? John Leglu, Montravius Adams, or Akello Witherspoon? Constantine, I, I'm not even going to hesitate in the slightest in saying that it's Adams. And I say that partly 
based on his performance, A, watching it live, and then B, watching the game again on video, he was someone who really stood out. And I'm not just saying that because he was a nose tackle wearing number 57. He was very good. And he was very good at a position of significant organizational need. Let's not kid anybody here. When Tyson Alualu went down, so did the position. No one, no one picked up nose tackle. It got so bad, as we saw, that Cam Hayward was forced to slide over there just because teams were attacking it. Cam now gets to play in his regular position instead of doing somebody else's damage control. And with Alualu quite possibly being done, I mean, he was 32 and this was a major ankle injury, and he was on a one-year deal, you might be looking at someone who has a chance to make a name for himself. And no, of course, I don't mean to extrapolate, uh, you know, one performance on one Sunday in which someone was going to be extra amped up. But you asked about potential staying power, and I think he's got that. Um, Leglu is no different. Talk about a position of organizational need, my goodness. And on top of that, this young man can play not just left guard. He can play either guard position, he can play the tackles, and he can play center. He's had a little bit of experience at center. He wants to make himself into an NFL mainstay. And the best way to do that, as any coach will tell you, head coach or positional coach, is to get versatile and get versatile in a hurry. He's done that. He's done that. He has a chance to solidify himself on this roster. Witherspoon's a little bit of a different story. I, I don't mean to, to, to knock him here. I, I thought he had a pretty good game on Sunday in place of Joe Hayden, and of course he's going to have to have another one here tonight. But there's a reason he's moved around a little bit and he can get exposed a lot more by a quarterback who's more efficient with the pass than Lamar Jackson is. Ravens aren't a great passing team. So Witherspoon did what was required of him uh, to borrow Tomlinism, and it's understandable that not only Witherspoon but all three of these guys were called out in a positive way by Tomlin immediately after the game, just glowing about them, actually. Uh, he loves when players like this rise up. He loves additional standard is the standard material. The truth is, guys, this has not been a great year for that slogan. Players have been forced to step in and stunk, largely at the linebacker positions, but really all over. And that can affect your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Culture's too strong, but your, your mindset as a team. It can bring you down a little bit because whenever the coach says that, you want to believe that. As the backup, you want to believe. I remember Anthony Ciccolo when he was here once telling me that he had to believe when he stepped onto the field that he could could be T.J. Watt, even if it was just for a play, that he could fill T.J.'s spot for a play, for a snap, and make the play that he needed to. And you don't want to lose that. You, you want to keep that. It, it, it's, it's, it, that line is not for fans. That line is for the people on the inside. So fans can roll their eyes at it all they want, especially when the team doesn't do well. But it means something on the inside. And all three of these guys stepping up the way they did. If they were to do it again here tonight, that would that would really be important, I feel, toward where this team might be headed for the rest of the season. I appreciate the question, Constantine. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We will obviously have another one from here tomorrow morning.